Guelph University and I studied politics because I imagined myself looking dapper in professional business suits, drafting policy that empowered marginalized humans. But I was drinking a 26er of Alberta Springs every single day being delivered to my door with a pack of smokes for the cost of $22.50. There were buildings I never walked inside, lecture halls that I wanted to be a part of, but I circled around them and I barfed on the steps and returned to the bar. And at the end of my second year, I got the letter. <clears throat> Dear Miss Fraser, we conclude that you have failed at everything. Thanks for coming out and thanks for the 30 grand you've given us thus far. Now go call your parents and go home. It was the longest drive down Highway 6 in human history. But deep down I felt relief. This new freedom though, with no future goal in mind, was a death trap. Do you have a future goal? Do you have a goal for tomorrow, for the next 17 minutes? Five years in, I was wearing a terry cloth robe. It became my second skin because it's too much effort to get dressed. My roommate came home with her mom and her best friend, and apparently I was doing a very sassy strip tease for the fish in the tank. And in hindsight, I'd like to say it was probably a really good show. I crashed two cars and never got issued a breathalyzer. But one night I rented a movie. It was a movie that was gonna change my life. It made me realize perfection is an illusion. Train spotting. Y'all know this film? In the opening scene, the main character is grabbing everything he needs out of the general store to kick his heroin habit, and something inside me just broke, and I knew I had to redefine what perfection was. I just had to survive. So I took off my terry cloth robe, stained in vomit and my own feces and my hateful skin. I was going to redefine perfection by simply surviving, and I wonder what will you do to survive? I had to get over myself and check my ego at the door. 24 days later, I emerged sober. I chose life, and that is perfection. I've made mistake after mistake, blah, 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 whatever. Like I'm still here. So with booze behind me, though, I was lost, really lost. And I asked my mom, what am I supposed to do now? And she said, well, Heather, what makes you happy? And I'm like, munchos, like the chips, you know, those salty chips? She's like, Heather, what is it that you do every single day? And I really didn't know. And then I thought, oh, I draw. I draw. I scribble. I make mistakes on the paper. I draw to save myself. I draw to let it out. I draw to perfect my visions. But that quest for perfection, that constant comparison of my artwork to your artwork and her painting to mine became a source of oppression. It was a cage that I built around myself. But I plug along and I sell art from time to time and I'm developing a style, a graffiti style. I learn how to draw in a certain way, in a certain bird, at a certain time, in a certain color, and there I stop. I pick up only materials that I simply understand because no perfect person ever asks for help from anyone else. See how absurd this is? See what asinine thinking this is? I'm cutting off my nose to spite my face. My mom always said that. Ugh, she's a smart woman. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the forest, in nature, as always, in and amongst my trees. I surrender and I say, trees, please help me be brave to take risks, to not be so afraid to make mistakes. They sway and they laugh and they say, <laughs> you're gonna die old and alone and full of regret if you just don't start doing the things. <laughs> so I look at one of my favorite trees and I circle around her trunk. She's broken in parts, her bark lay on the ground. She was full of hosting insects. She was flowing and majestic. She was perfect. The next evening, I entered an art competition. Maybe you've heard of it, it's called Art Battle. Y'all know what this is? Well, they take a group of artists and they put you in a circle and they give you a canvas and then they give you 20 minutes and you're supposed to take nothing and make it something and it has to be grand and wonderful and unique in 20 minutes. That's outrageous. So there I am, staring at a blank canvas, canvas in a painting competition with the buzzards of human judgment circling around me and it occurs to me, I don't even know the basic fundamentals of color mixing. 
I am not prepared. But the trees told me that I would die of regret if I didn't do this. Damn those trees. So I Bob Ross it, hardcore. <laughs> happy little trees, little pink, pa pa pa, da 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 da, right? No, happy little mistakes. I love you, Bob Ross. I love you, right? 18 minutes later into a 20 minute art battle, and I take a step back. And there I am, staring at my latest epic mistake. It's a great big gray blob of gray, blob of gray. I feel the burn of tears starting. I'm going to run. I fail. I'm paralyzed. But then I feel a tap on my shoulder. It's my best friend. Psst. Uh, buddy, what are you doing? <laughs> You've only got like a minute left. You've got like a minute. You've got to try something. Try something. Try anything. Ding! Try anything. I could do anything. I put down my brushes and I pulled out my palette knife and I began scraping. 20 minutes are up. I look at my canvas. It's a new forest with new birds, new trees that have never even been discovered yet. My perfect mistake. Perfection is just an illusion. I didn't win the event, but I showed up. I took an artistic risk in front of others, and I turned a series of mistakes into a kick-ass original piece of art. Thank you. I am happy to report that my floodgates of curiosity were wide open, and now I'm surrounded by humans who don't think I'm too sensitive. They don't think I'm too much, and if they do, there's the door. Are you too much? No, you're perfect. Do you make mistakes? Every single day. So what? We're all still here. I'm learning that learning is part of the process and that the professionals are the ones who ask the most questions. I'm feeding the desire to grow rather than that hard, wired behavior to hide. That is just perfection arriving. I wash windows for a large commercial property sometime, you know, like the large, I have the pole, like I really do, it's awesome, I love my gear. And one day a random stranger comes up and says, oh hey, you missed a spot, and I'm like, oh, I've heard that a million times before. She's like, no, you've really missed a spot. And I look up and I happen to see that in fact, yes, I have missed a significant portion of the window that is covered in bird poop, and I realized why. I missed it because I was so goddamn busy staring at my own reflection in the glass just to make sure I was presentable to the outside world at any given moment. As I'd begun to break down my artistic limitations, I also had to address my own messed up ideas of physical perfection. The quest for the six pack, the cellulite free existence, the flawless face, ooh, the serums, how I love me a good serum. <laughs> I went home from window washing that day. I counted eight mirrors in my house, which is really no big deal if you live in an average size house of say 1,200 square feet. Well folks, I live in a bachelorette apartment that is 320 square feet. Eight mirrors, do the math. They were everywhere. No matter what position I was in, I was constantly confirming that I existed. I had basically built my own mirrored cage of artistic oppression and physical judgment. And on that day, I slowly and methodically took down all my mirrors. Take down your mirrors. Stop looking at yourself every second. Put your phone down. It just doesn't matter. You do exist. I see you. Hi. You, in the blue. Yeah, you, hi. <laughs> You're here, and I see you. And we don't need mirrors to confirm it. I was crying while I was taking down my mirrors, grabbing at myself, shouting, it's OK, you're still here. You're perfect. Just get over yourself. The trees are beautiful, but they don't look at themselves to confirm it. They know it because they stand tall in their truths. And I challenge you to do the same. The color yellow goat splashed onto a canvas and it doesn't need to see its reflection to confirm it exists. It exists in its perfect placement. I am full of wonder and so are you. So pick up the tool, the outlet that you need and be free. Take the risk for the love of whatever you call God. Try anything. 
Try anything. Beauty is an illusion, perfection is an illusion, and we are all just showing up, and that is authentic, that is real, that's the stuff the trees were talking about. I am a most perfect color storm, and I am still here. Thank you. Woo!